What's happening guys? Keith here with another Impact Wrestling Review. So last night's episode was pretty good. Um, solid show overall. A few things I didn't care for. Um, not quite as good as last week's episode, unfortunately, but I mean, still a very serviceable episode. Um, we had a theme throughout the night, and uh, that's kind of how we kicked off the show. So we opened the show with Josh Matthews in the virtual studio, and he's talking about the attack that Don Callis had suffered at the hands of Sammy Callahan two weeks back in Destiny Wrestling. Obviously, they didn't tell us it was two weeks back because we had a whole episode that went by and so on and so forth. Kind of the crappy thing when you're taping episodes in advance, but hey, it is what it is. Um, so we get the footage of what had happened, and Don Callis was receiving a comeback award in Destiny Wrestling. Callahan shows up, bat in hand, lays out Don Callis, beaten and bloodied in the ring. Uh, we get a video from Sammy Callahan, you know, kind of saying, you deserve this, Booker Man. You stuck your nose in my business. You threw in the towel in the I Quit match between... Callahan and Eddie Edwards at the Impact uh, vs. Lucha show at WrestleCon. And uh, so all the executives were getting together and having a meeting about Sammy Callahan's fate with Impact Wrestling. And uh, once they came up with a decision, we would find out. So, I mean, what they've been doing is fantastic. Callahan has been staying in character through everything. He's been killing it on Twitter. He even got into it with uh, Paul Lazenby, who is a uh, former, I believe, MMA fighter. And uh, he's a regular on the uh, Killing the Town podcast with Storm and Cyrus. So he said something along the lines of, I've seen, I saw what happened to Don Callis. And the one thing that I would call Sammy Callahan is unsafe. And he just took the ball and ran with it. Um, like I said, it, it is kind of crappy that everything is taped. Um, you know, this had happened two weeks ago. I mean, if this stuff was live, it would just be pure gold. Not that it isn't fantastic now because they're doing a great job and it's something we haven't seen in years, but I mean, it, it would have been at that next level. Uh, or even if it was back in the day of, you know, the internet not being, as big as it is today and everybody knowing firsthand what's going on, spoilers, things like that. I mean, you would just have people on the edge of their seats really wanting to know, you know, is this real? And I mean, they've been blurring that line between shoot and work and all the things they've done. Like I said, Sammy Callahan, when he did the Talk is Jericho interview, he was completely in character. When he's on Twitter, completely in character. And, you know, they've, they've done a great job with this. It's just that it's unfortunate that it happened during a time where everybody has so much knowledge about the industry because, like I said, this could have been a top thing during the Monday Night Wars or even during the Attitude Era. So after that, we get a video package hyping the main event between Eli Drake and Pentagon Jr. since Eli Drake is cashing in his Feaster Fire briefcase. Um, great video. Impact's put it together. Fantastic video packages. Um, and then we find out that Josh Matthews is on commentary by himself. Um, not the decision I would have went with, and not even because I think Josh did a good job, because he basically was almost down in the dumps the entire episode, like they were mourning the loss of Don Callis, and that just kind of translated to everything, so that's how he was kind of calling all the matches, he was kind of down and everything, so I think that hurt it a little bit and I mean you're kind of setting him up for failure you're giving one person the job of normally two people I don't know why they didn't have Sonjay just fill in for this one week and I mean I'm, I'm glad they went that route of Callus not being on commentary because of everything that happened so kudos to Impact for that but I think they should have had another person there because have one having one person fill two roles is uh almost impossible but I got to give credit for the job that Josh Matthews did even though he was plugging a lot of other things throughout the night. But again, he's not completely at fault. And we open the show with DJ Z and Andrew Everett versus LAX. Um, crowd was alive for this match. I don't know what night of the tapings it took place, but they were definitely into it. Fast paced, high flying match, what you would expect from these four guys. Um, Andrew Everett, a couple close calls. I mean, just him doing, I think it was a moonsault off the ropes. And between the guardrail, like, very little room, but the man landed it perfectly. 
And then he hit, uh, I believe, Santana with one on the other side. But he was so close to the ring, if it wasn't for Santana catching him, it could have ended very poorly. But again, I think Santana actually had posted up on Twitter saying, you know, that's that's our job is to keep the other person safe. And he's 100% right there. And uh, great that he was able to do that. Um, but like I said, back and forth action throughout the match. I like the pairing of DJZ and Andrew Everett. Fantastic to have DJZ back in the company and Andrew Everett being a uh, regular on the show. He was not showcased for a while there, um, doing a little bit with uh, Trevor Lee and Caleb Conley, but that's about it. So LAX sets up for the street sweeper on DJZ. DJZ is able to counter and uh, roll up Ortiz for the win. Uh, so basically, the mental destruction of uh, LAX continues. Definitely the right decision here. Um, LAX is obviously still concerned with what happened with Conan in, in order to con uh, not be able to concentrate on the match and things like that. And just good storytelling here, the right way to book the match. And with that win, I believe next week, DJZ and Andrew Everett get a title shot against the current tag team champions, Eli Drake and Scott Steiner. So we go backstage and uh, we see Joseph and Grado, back, uh, Joseph Park, that is, and Grado backstage and uh, talking about Grado's return match. And Joseph Park does not believe uh, Grado has a new girlfriend. And we get Katarina, she walks up, also known as Winter, uh, and she comes and kisses Grado. Park asks her what she sees in him, and she says it's what's on the inside that counts. So just basically reintroducing Grado and uh, Katarina. So we see Aries backstage, and he says he's going to keep an eye on the main event. Uh, he says since he is going to reclaim his other world title. Um, I, I do like that he is still holding the grand championship and calling it a world title. Just a, a little, you know, little things that go a long way. So up next, we have Rohit Raju versus Grado. Um, yeah, not much to say about this match. It wasn't wasn't too good, um, but basically a return match for Grado. Katarina was ringside with him, so it was basically just getting the, those two on the show. Um, Grado ends up getting the win after hitting the cannonball in the corner, um, and that was that. After the match, we go backstage, and Joseph Park is laid out, and we see that same symbol of the circle with the X through it on top of him. Um, so we moved from, I guess, backstage personnel now to wrestlers. Not sure how long this is going to go for or who's behind it, if it's one person, if it's a bunch of people, but I'm interested to see. Um, then we get a video package for Tessa Blanchard. Uh, this was well put together, kind of learn why she's here and who she is, kind of gives people a... Uh, an idea of the type of person she is and her family's history, things like that. It was a good video package, and I believe next week she will be wrestling Kira Hogan, so that makes sense. And then we get a interview with uh, Mackenzie interviewing uh, both Eli Drake and Scott Steiner. Eli is asked about his match with Pentagon tonight. Uh, Drake says he wants to be recognized as the number one guy and tells Aries that there is a new belt collector in town. Uh, Steiner says that he has Eli's back tonight, and Eli says, you know what, I gotta go out there and do it myself, and, uh, Steiner's like, ah, people always need friends, and he kind of took offense to it, so I don't know if something's brewing there, um, could just be a little, little something. Then we have the four-way match for the number one contendership for the X Division Championship. This was, uh, Drago versus Aerostar Van versus Phantasma versus Taiji Ishimori, um... You know, I posted a question to uh, Robert Does Wrestling. He hosts daily Impact Wrestling polls on his Twitter page. And, you know, I, I said, how does everybody feel about Impact having a some sort of commissioner or authority figure? And everybody said no. And while I agree that it probably wouldn't be handled well... Um, that it just seems like there needs to be a reason for matches to take place in some instances. Um, what if they didn't want to go that route with an authority figure or figure or a commissioner? Um, they could have just had all the guys kind of show up in the back and you know tell Matt Seidel they want a title match, and then all of a sudden the four guys kind of get into it and we have a match like it organically happened. But I mean, even if they just had a booker or somebody that just 
you know, they kind of said, all right, so-and-so is making this match, and the winner will get this. And just a little gripe I had. Um, but this wasn't a bad match. Um, it went on a while. I think it lasted, like, somewhere between 15 and 20 minutes. Um, good spots, as usual. It wasn't quite the uh, six-man tag from last week. Um, but a couple of scary spots for uh, Aerostar. He went to springboard over the top rope onto Drago on the outside and landed on his shoulder and head. It was just not a fun sight. Uh, but, you know, since we had four competitors in this match, a lot of near falls, all broken up by, you know, a third or fourth man in the match. Um, but Phantasma ends up picking up the victory after hitting the thrill of the kill on Aerostar. Um, the guy I picked for the match to win, I thought... He was the best choice to win the match, and uh, that should be a great match between him and Matt Seidel. I believe, well, you know what, I'll go on to talk about that after I get to that match. So up next, we have Eddie Edwards going backstage where the meeting is taking place. He just opens the door, and then we cut to commercial. Perfect cliffhanger for a commercial. We come back, and we hear, the, obviously, Eddie open the door, and we hear yelling inside the room, and they're like, Sammy's fired, he's done here. And Eddie starts screaming. He's like, I almost lost my F and I for this company. I didn't ask for you guys to throw in the towel. And so at this point, I think it was Scott Demore that said, you know what, if you want to do anything with Sammy Callahan, we want no part of it. We don't want it to be done in Impact Wrestling. So then later on in the evening, we hear that next week we will get a street fight between Eddie Edwards and Sammy Callahan that take place in the uh, House of Hardcore promotion. So... Great way to give back to Tommy Dreamer's promotion, considering the work he's done for Impact. I, this is this is the way that working together with promotions works out. A little give and take here. And uh, it makes sense. Promotion's called House of Hardcore. Come on now. So, up next, we have Moose versus Congo Kong in the House of Hardcore promotion. Now, I don't know if it was just me, but it, after last week, it seemed like that the match was actually going to happen in the Impact Zone. Um... Quality of the match was very good. I mean, I know House of Hardcore does a lot of Twitch events, so their quality is good. Um, but the way the match ended was perfect that it happened outside of Impact since uh, Jimmy Jacobs ended up getting involved, and I believe he hit Moose with a chair. So that was the perfect decision. I didn't have a problem with this ending of the match considering it was outside of the promotion. If it was, you know, a definitive finished the match I wouldn't I don't know if I would have been completely on board with it but obviously this continues and it will come to a head at you know somewhere in the impact zone or hell maybe they'll drag it out to slammiversary who knows that's a long way away though so and we see uh KM telling Falaba that he can get him into the best shape of his life and then we see KM you know kind of motivating Ba running around he was following him in a golf cart, running upstairs, and then it just ends with uh, Falaba passing out. And KM was eating the entire time that Falaba was exercising and working out. It, it was a pretty funny segment, but just a little, uh, little something here. So up next, we have Brian Cage, you know, his world tour in uh, Pro Wrestling Noah. Uh, so fun fact about the match that was shown, that match actually took place in June of 2017, not the end of the world, it doesn't matter, you're just showcasing Brian Cage and what he can do, and, you know, you're kind of giving him time away from the roster and just destroying everybody in his path. Uh, Cage obviously goes over with the drill claw. And then this next segment, I, I, I don't understand why they did it, or even, or the transition wasn't even good. Uh, we got the Global Wrestling Network match of the week, didn't even pop up on the screen that it was happening, we just got the announcement from Josh Matthews, uh, it was an Ultimate X match between uh, Suicide, Alex Shelley, um, Conscious Consequence Creed, and Jay Lethal. And, I mean, it was kept short at least, but it was completely useless. It definitely just felt like it was thrown there. Um, we go backstage and we see Allie kind of replaying all everything that happened last week in her head. And uh, she opens her door, and there's like a voodoo doll outside with uh, like a scroll attached to it. So she pulls out the needle, opens the scroll, looks in the mirror, and starts acting strange. And uh, which actually I have some news for Rosemary on uh, this week's Impact report. Unfortunately, not good news, but at least it, you know, kind of lets us know where we stand with things. 
But uh, it was a great segment. I love the way they did it. And uh, oh, before I want to mention this, throughout the night we got the uh, a little commercial for the one night only taping Cali Combat that's going to air tonight. Um, and it, it was just fantastic. I love the music. I love the way it was produced. It was just uh, another good thing that Impact Wrestling is doing. And uh, hopefully I'll have a review of that tomorrow on the page as well. So up next we have the main event for the evening and that is pentagon jr defending his world title against eli drake um not the outcome i was expecting or the match that i was expecting they probably gave this six or seven minutes while they were able to put on a good match in that short period of time i feel like it should have been given a little more time i mean you know you made the feast or fired briefcase be a pretty big thing and then this is what happens with it it's just i don't know kind of very underwhelming um almost a waste of uh, a cash in. You figured Eli would have held on to it a little longer, and uh, we would have gotten a longer match, basically, considering how much time they gave that X Division Fatal Four Way. Um, but yeah, like I said, felt like a waste of time here for Eli's title shot. Uh, Eli ends up going up for the Moon Salt, ends up missing. Pentagon Junior hits the Pentagon Driver and retains the championship. Um, but. I'm sure this will go back to uh, Austin Aries versus Pentagon. Still unfinished business there, so I'm sure that's we just need to get this out of the way. Um, but, you know, like I said, some good things, some bad things. You know, you're never going to put together a perfect show, so that's always going to happen. Um, and, yeah, well, I guess we'll see what happens next week. Uh, looks to be a good show. I believe it's going – they already have the main event lined up, and that's uh, – Matt Seidel and Austin Aries versus uh, Phantasma and Pentagon Jr. So that looks to be a killer main event. Um, but yeah, I'm looking forward to next week's show. Should be good. And uh, that's pretty much all I have for you guys. So thanks for checking out my video. And as always, don't forget to like, share, and subscribe. Thanks, guys. Bye.